Boop. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back to another video from Slide Cow. My name is Yo-Yo, and yep, time to make your slides amazing again. First of all, I want to apologize if I sound a bit weird. I've been sick all week and this cold just refuses to let go. But anyway, this week we're talking objectives. The objective slide is pretty much in every other PowerPoint presentation. Sadly though, a lot of them just don't have that wow factor. They tend to just look so bland, so dull. Ugh. Guess what? We're gonna change all of that. Look, we know objectives are important, but the real question is, why are they so important in PowerPoint? My answer comes from Dr. J.B. Barney and Dr. Ricky W. Griffin's book, The Management of Organizations. But I'm going to amend it slightly so it suits the context. Basically, there are four reasons. First, objectives set the guidance and the direction for your audience throughout your PowerPoint presentation or your PowerPoint deck. Second, objectives facilitate the planning process for your audience. Third, objectives can motivate and can even inspire your audience. And fourth, objectives help evaluate and control the performance of your content. Basically, objectives set the foundation for your content. Every single one of your slides for your PowerPoint presentation or for your PowerPoint deck should refer back to your objectives. Now here's the thing, no objectives leads to your content not being effective. Ineffective content leads to angry audiences. Angry audiences leads to riots. Riots lead to wars. Wars lead to the extinction of cats, which also means kittens. Do you want to kill kittens? Are you a kitten killer? I didn't think so. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay guys, the first thing you want to do is you want to draw five circles. Once you draw the big circle, as you can see here, every other circle has to be smaller than the previous circle. Something that you see like this, right? Um, what I recommend you do for the purpose of this tutorial though, is just to follow the dimensions I've provided just at the top of this circle, or in this, cir in this, in this circle's case, the one below it, um, just so you can get a similar sort of look and feel as to what you see in front of you right there. So I'm just gonna let you pause the video now and draw your five circles. Just put them anywhere you want on the slide, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so by now, you should have five circles on your slide, similar to what you see here. The first thing we're going to do, let's just delete this text first. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to color them all in. Just make sure that every other circle has a different color. In my case, I started off with orange, then black, then orange, then black, and then I had white um, at the end over there. So let's just do that. So we're going to have orange here, and then black here, and then just move the outline of all of them as well. That. And then orange again. Oops, that's not the orange I wanted. And then black again. And then let's just leave that one orange for now so we can see it uh, on, on the slide canvas. Once you have all of your circles colored, you're going to highlight them all and you're going to go to home, arrange, align, and then align center. Then home again, arrange, align, and then align middle. And then there you go. And then you can just make your small circle bit white. There we go. That looks better. So you might find yourself in a situation where one of your circles might be, you know, behind another circle. That's okay. Um, all I have to do is just click on the bigger circle and then click on send to back and just do this for all of them until you get that th this sort of design that you see here. You know, just keep moving downwards or something. But it's very amendable so don't even worry about that. So now we have our dartboard, we're going to highlight everything and we're going to press Ctrl G and just move it to the side for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw the little uh, arrow thing that you see here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on insert shapes and then make a long and thin rectangle, something that looks like, let's say something that looks like um, this, just make it a bit taller than that, yeah that looks fine. And then we're going to click on insert, click on shapes. And then we're gonna click on the right angle triangle, this right triangle that you see here. Just draw it out like this. Um, click on home, arrange, rotate, and then rotate left by 90 degrees. Uh, highlight them both and click on format and then click on shape outline, no outline. Something looks like this. Make sure it doesn't have an outline. And then just place that little triangle just above the little rectangle you see there until you get something that looks like this. 
All right? Once you're happy with how it looks, just highlight both of them and then click on Format, Merge Shapes, and Union. Now it's just one shape, right? Okay, so cool, now you have half an arrow. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw the little base of the arrow, that little tail thing there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Insert, Shapes, and we're going to pick the parallelogram and make something that looks like this. Um, just move the yellow circle thing that you see here to the right to change the angles just a bit. So that, that looks fine. And if you want a little curve thing that you see that I have here, do you see how all my corners are, are pretty, like, you know, pretty straight, and pretty rugged, and pretty raw, except for this curved one there? Just uh, click on Format, click on Edit Shape, and then click on Edit Points. Um, in between the bottom left point that you see here and the top left point, you're going to right click and then click on Add Point. And you're gonna do the same for the uh, top left point and the top right point, and click on add a point over there. Just right click and then click on add point. So the top left point now, highlight your cursor over it, and then click on smooth point. Move that point downwards here until you get a curve effect that you're satisfied with. So I'm pretty satisfied with how that looks there. Um, I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller like you see here. And yeah, that looks okay. Let's just change the color of that and make sure it doesn't have an outline. Okay, so I'm gonna put that tail on my arrow. Note, I'm not putting it, you know, stuck to my rectangle. I'm literally put overlaying it. I'm doing something that looks like this. Just keep note of that. Um, all right, so there we go. Now we have half an arrow. Now we have half an arrow. So we're gonna highlight everything. We're gonna press Control G to group them up. We're gonna copy and paste it, and we're going to go to, to make a duplicate. We're gonna go to Home, we're gonna go to Arrange, and then we're going to go to Rotate, and then flip Vertical. And then that way, you have the other half of the arrow. So you might be asking, why the hell did we have to do that if we could just done that, you know, with just two shapes? Well, let me tell you, my good friend. Let me tell you, my good sir. The truth is, guys, um, Design comes down to technique and it's the little details that count. Here, what you see is that there's a bit of shading, right? So you have a dark gray and a light gray, and that's exactly what we're trying to achieve with this one. So we're gonna click on the bottom part and we're gonna pick the darkest gray that we can find by going to Format, Shape Fill, and clicking on this dark gray color here, right? Um, just guys, just make sure that everything's ungrouped by highlighting everything and then pressing Control Shift G because we are going to group it up later. Anyway. So the top part now is gonna be a lighter gray. So we're gonna to go to Format, Shape Fill, gonna make this something like just a lighter gray. Just make sure it's not the same color as the lighter one, uh, as the darker one, sorry. And then there you go. There we have our arrow. Look how cool that looks. It's ready to just fly. Uh, highlight this and we drew it on. So um, let's just move the arrow to our dartboard here, obviously just place it in the center, and to add that little awesome effect, just tilt it to the, to the left a bit by rotating it, and you can do that by obviously pressing the rotate button and driving it to the left, and then just moving it over here. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, you can just, you can edit it. So if, for example, I find that this is just too huge, I'm just going to make sure that it's straight now. Yeah, that's uh, just make sure it's straight so you can easily change the size. Um, hold shift and move it to the right to make it smaller. I'll obviously move it to the left to make it bigger. And the reason why we're holding shift is to maintain the aspect ratio so that we don't make our thing look like this, right? So hold shift and I'm just gonna make mine a bit smaller like so. And we're going to rotate it upwards like this. And yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, that looks fine. That looks okay. There you go. Okay, so now we have our image and it looks awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna highlight everything like so and press Control G. And um, if you wanna make it a bit bigger, like I, I think mine could be a bit bigger, just hold Shift like I told you before and just move it outwards like this. Let's just move that to the right. That looks pretty cool, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So what's left is to actually put the objectives and the objectives are going to be on the right portion of the slide which you see right over, whoops, screwed that up, right over there. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a text box and to do that we're just going to click on insert and then text box as you can see over here. I'm just going to fill this out randomly so just be awesome at things and underneath it we're just going to blah 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 just copy this that all over. Change the font size to 13. Make this Panton flat caps, big font is work, and we're just gonna do that and just make sure that everything is just fine. Okay, so I did three things there, and I think it's important for you guys to follow the same sort of principles that I did in your future PowerPoint decks or your future PowerPoint presentations, just to be a better professional at whatever it is that you do. The first thing I did was that I added a title to my objective, as you can see here. The be awesome at things, that's not an objective. An objective is usually following the SMART criteria. SMART being the first one specific, then measurable, assignable, realistic, and then time related. So the title that I did here was just to summarize that. And the reason why I did that is because it allows my audience to sort of see where I'm going with my objectives. So they can just refer back to it easier. Talking about referring back to it easier, I also numbered it, okay? And the reason why is because if you, let's say you're at slide 11 or slide 13, they can always say something like going back to objective two or going back to objective four, it allows them to sort of be comfortable with the fact that um, you're going the extra mile to sort of, you know, uh, make things easy for them, making it easier for them to follow along. And that's what you should always be aiming for. So the third thing I did was I added the objective here. This objective, the blah, blah, blah that you see here should follow the SMART criteria. It should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be assignable, it should be realistic, and it should be time related every single time, all right? So now that we have that out of the way, we can continue with the design protocol. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click here and press backspace and press one dot. And the reason why is because I want to disable automatic numbering. Um, the reason for that is because we're going to be using the same text box multiple times for different objectives, right? And you don't want to head, make your head hurt uh, because of the automatic numbering always being one all across the board. Um, let's just move this to the right just a bit like this, just make it a bit smaller. And now we're going to add an icon. Now, icons are great, as you know, uh, to, to reflect what, what your text means and uh, it's a visual component to your text. Um, just be sure to always pick an icon that reflects the text itself. I know here I have be great at things and it's a speech bubble. That's what you should not do. You should always just try and find that one icon that reflects your text no matter what. And you might be asking, how do I get icons like these on my PowerPoint slides I've been looking for so long? Don't worry, we covered a video on that that you can see right over there. It is fantastic. It is basically our best video to date. You know, it'll, it'll teach you everything you need to know when it comes down to icon design and icon and bringing in icons uh, into your PowerPoint uh, slide. So just to save time, I'm just going to click on this, sorry, these icons over here, and I'm just gonna bring them into our slide and just move them away for now. Let's just take this icon here and just move it just so it's next to our little text box. Um, just to make sure it's all perfectly aligned, click on the icon, click on the text box, click on arrange, click on align, and click on align, oh, uh, <laughs> align middle. Um, there you go. So now highlight the text box and highlight the icon, press on control G, press control shift, and drag them downwards like so. And the reason why is we're making placeholders for the other stuff. Um, highlight all your text boxes that you see now and press on arrange, line, and distribute vertically, like you can see there. Cool. All right. So um, when, you have, when you're done with that, just highlight them all again and press control shift G to ungroup them, delete the other three icons that you see there, and then just move the icons that you'd like to see um, once you know it's all aligned and stuff, like how we're about to do right here. that and just make sure everything's straight uh, click on all your icons click on arrange align and click on align center Oops, go to the left and then there you go so now you can just use this as a placeholder to just like uh, you know for whatever you want so I'm just gonna do this and you know the threes be a cow I guess question mark and number four is be happy. Joel would be happy. 
And finally, the last thing that you should consider doing is highlighting all of these text boxes and icons that you see here by pressing Ctrl D to group them up and making sure that your picture here is also grouped up. Highlight them both, click on Arrange, click on Align, click on Align Middle just to make sure it's all perfectly aligned. Let's just move that there. This is just some fine tuning now. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Look how cool that looks, right? Guys, we've done it! It is awesome. It looks so great, right? I want you guys to be that PowerPoint guy. I want you guys to be that guy who goes like, how does he even manage to even make that? You know, where did he get that picture? Did he do it on Google? What, what, what's going on here? It is awesome teaching you guys. We truly, truly love you guys. Um, please, please, please. Uh, to be honest with you, we're just going through a random bucket list of what we should be covering. But if there is something that you want us to cover, whether it's design oriented or whatever, just tell us, just tell us. Don't be scared to tell us. Everyone here knows that every comment that you put onto the video gets responded to, right? We read everything, guys. We read every single thing. So don't be scared to ask, can you guys help me by doing this? Not an issue. Anyway, guys, I understand the holidays are approaching. I just wanted to say I'll be happy with like Cal. Happy holidays. Uh, we really, 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 really hope you enjoy your time and, uh, and with your families and with your friends. And, you know, you guys worked really hard all year. You deserve to, be, to have that little time off, uh, get recharged for 2017. So, guys, it is awesome teaching you. It is always going to be awesome teaching you. If you do like the video, please do comment, do like it, do share it, and please do subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.